Okay, back in chapter two, we had this interest formula that we used. So should we start out, principal is $40, it has an interest rate of 6% for five years. And we stuck it into this formula and got the following. When we have the amount equals, we would have $40, one plus .06, and that would all be five years. And we got out our calculator, and we said, hey, let's punch that in. 40 times 1.06 all to the fifth power, and we hit enter, and we're like, ooh, $53.53. .53. We have $53.53. And what has really happened here is on a timeline like this, so we would have $40 starts right here, and then we'd have at the end of one year, we would have uh, 6% and it, what would happen is we'd go this entire year and 6% would whoosh, slap onto that $40. And then we'd have a second year right here. At the end of two years, we would have another 6% that would come and whoosh, and we'd add that 6% on. And we'd do that at the end of three years and four years and five years. And that's what this formula does. Well, most banks will not just compound every year, but they will do it like in a month or in a quarter. So this is going to be, um, compound. we're going to call this compounding interest. And we're going to do it, first we're going to do it quarterly. So, oops, quarterly. So in a timeline like this, if we start with $40, here's the end of the first year, here's the end of the second year, here's the end of the third year, what we're going to do now is instead of this 6%, which happens during the whole year, we are now going to chop it into one, two, three, four pieces. And be like, oh, we're going to take this portion and compound it back into the $40. Then we're going to take this portion and compound it back into the 40 something dollars, and then this, and then this. So each one of these now that we've broken it up into quarters, it's going to be only a quarter of 6%, but it's going to happen four times as often. And so we get a whole new formula. So pay attention to what goes on here. We have, we're going to have 6% over the whole year, but it gets divided by 4. So we're going to have the exact same thing, but now we're going to have 40 times 1 plus, now instead of 0 0.06, it's now going to be 0 0.06 divided by 4. But notice, this now doesn't happen 5 times like up here. It now happens for 5 years, but it happens 1, 2, 3, 4 times each year. So it's going to happen, I'm going to put 4 times 5 right up here. Now we're going to punch this into the calculator and see what we get. So you can see I've now hit 40 times 1 plus, instead of 1 plus 0 0.06, it's 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 4, and order of operations will ensure that that gets done first, to the 4 times 5. And now we hit enter, and we now have almost the same number, but not quite. 5387. So it gave us just a little bit more over the course of the, the five years, 5353 to 5387. So this was called compounding quarterly. Now if we were to do it, so we did this 12 times, that's going to be really hard to draw, but I'll give it just a shot on this first one. So in this first year, there's one year, we're going to break it up into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different times. We're going to start with $40. Now the 6% has to happen over the full year, so we're going to take 6%, but divide it by 12 pieces this time. So this is going to be 0 0.06 over 12. This is what's called, this is the annual interest rate. This guy, and this is kind of important, is called the periodic rate, the periodic interest rate for to be able to do that. So this would be if we compound monthly. So we're now going to have 
a equals 40. Now it's going to be 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12. So this is going to happen every month. So it's 12 times in the year. And now, how many periods do we have where we're going to be compounding? Well, we've got 12 in each year, and it's going to happen for five years, so that's got to be 12 times 5, 60 of them. And that's going to equal, let's pull out our handy dandy calculator. We've now typed in 40, 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the 12 times 5, and we get just a little bit more, 53.95. So this compounding, the more often it happens, you get a twelfth as much interest, but it compounds in and then earns interest the rest of the time. So the more compounding, the better. So we had stuff, this was actually, we called it a simple interest rate, but it is actually compounding every year that would happen. This is called compounding quarterly and then compounding monthly. And let's write down this formula right down here at the bottom so you can see what the formula looks like when you have, we're going to introduce a new couple of variables, n is number of compoundings per year. Compoundings per year. And then, yeah, that's the only thing that really changes. And you'll notice it comes here. We divide the annual rate by this to get the periodic rate, and then we times that by the number of years to get the number of compounding periods. So the new formula looks like this. The amount of investing this much money at that rate with that many compoundings, and here is a new formula that we punch stuff in and punch it into the calculator. So here's our formula for a savings account where we have a lump sum. So this is our P that we put in. We notice that we don't have any payment yet. No payment is going into the savings account, and we'll get to that in just a minute. There is a formula that we have in Excel called future value. Now this future value, or FV formula in Excel, we're going to put some of these things in, but we have to be very careful. This right here, I think we called that earlier, periodic rate. That is what Excel wants us to already figure out and put in there. The other one is this, uh, this is the number of periods total because you have the number of times per year times the number of years. So this is called the number of periods or in per. So in the last example that we did, we had that the principal was $40 and the uh, interest rate was 6% and the number of times per year was uh, 12. We did monthly at the last one and the number of years was 5. So when we put this in to Excel, it has something that's kind of really cool. It'll do it for us. Excel's a great calculator. One small detail before we go into Excel. Any money that goes away from you, so in this point we're investing money, we're putting it in the bank. This guy we have to put in as a negative. We'll come back to this in a bit when we show you how this works, but we've got to put in a negative number for that. So here we go. Let's show you how this works. We're going to go up here and find the future value. Now you can just type it in like this, future value, and it will find it. Or we can select a category, financial, and use the future value formula. Ah, uh, there it is, F of V. And we go like this, and it's going to ask us for some things. So the rate, now remember what it wants, it wants the periodic rate, so that divided by 12. And look, it calculates it for us right there. That's kind of cool. Now the number of periods, remember this happened five years for each month, so 12 times five is 60. The payment, now again, we didn't do any payments in this, so this one's zero. Now, PV stands for principal value, or our capital P in there. We invested $40. Don't forget, that's a negative $40. 
and look at what it comes up with. Ka-ching! $53.95. We can just stick it in there like that without any problem and it already does all those calculations. Okay, so now we're going to look at something. If you have a savings account where you do have a payment, so let's come down here and see what the savings account is. I don't expect you guys to memorize this. And even using it in a calculator is going to wait until you guys are in a group together. Here it is. There's the payment amount. Okay, there it is. If you have a savings account and you just start adding like $25 a month right in here and there's the periodic interest rate and you can see it in different places in the formula, that is a big formula. And very similar to that, here is a loan formula. Let's put this in red. The payment you must make on a loan it starts off with your principal value Wow, and there's your periodic interest rate and you'll see the number of periods but you'll notice this is now a negative exponent when you're dealing with the loan formula and so these we're gonna show you how these work in Excel and even in a group they'll be tricky on a calculator. Look at those formulas, don't they look kinda of big? So we're gonna show you on the spreadsheet how these work. For the first one we're just gonna show you what happens if you were to just do um, let's do FV, okay there it is. Uh, what if we did uh, six percent compounded monthly? That's the most common types, so the number of periods. Let's say over the course of 10 years. So we have um, 12, 120, 12 times 10. And instead of just starting out with $40, let's say we started out with $40 and we ended up putting in another $10 every month. Now, this is a negative $10 every month because it's going away from us and look at what we end up with. That is our end result, $1,711.57. Now that is how you can just use Excel just as a calculator, but you can also use it to see some really neat things. We're going to watch a savings account grow. So this is the, the year that, that's there, and so now we're going to watch something that starts out, let's say we started out with uh, $40, we're going to call it negative 40 and then it has an interest rate interest rate of say 6% and it's going to be compounded 12 times and every month we're going to put in $10 so a payment we're going to put in $10 So now watch how this thing is going to grow. So here we know that we're going to have to do the rate that they want, which is this is how we use the power of Excel divided by that. Good. So there's our periodic rate and then the number of periods is going to be equal to this times the number of years that we have. Excellent. So we'll call that Y right up there. Okay, now here, this is our final amount that we have. Now, this is going to um, be FV. So again, find FV. Since we've used it recently, it'll be right there. So there's our rate, and the number of periods is right there. We've already found it. The payment is going to be right there and the principal value is going to be right there. Okay, so that's what we have at the end of the first year. And if we take and copy and paste these guys, control C, control V, that's what it is at the end of the second year. 
Now if we look at these and we just say, mm, let's do, let's paste one more, control V right there. There we go. Now look, we can see it actually growing. So if we highlight these and we now drag this on, it will give us an indication. Uh, let's go up to like 15 years. Uh-oh, we got too much money. It can't tell what we've got there. There you go. So this is where we had 10 years before and we can watch it keep growing and we can see all of these things and if we were to change how much our principal value was or change our interest rate or change our payments we would see these numbers automatically change so there's a savings plan formula where you can actually watch it grow kinda neat so now we're going to look at a loan formula and see how Excel can help us with that so if we started out taking a loan for say fifteen thousand dollars I don't know whether you're buying a small home, large car, whatever it may be, $15,000, and the interest rate is 6% that you are charged on it, you're going to try to pay off this loan in four years, and you're going to be making monthly payments, which means this compounding is going to be happening against you now 12 times per year. So we're going to look at that. So we're going to go into Excel and just punch this guy in and we could do it all in once but we're going to use kind of the power of Excel to show you where everything comes from. So here we have a loan payment. Our rate is 0 0.06. That's our annual rate. The number of years is 4. N number of times per year is 12. Principal is 15 thousand now notice this is a positive because when you get a loan it comes to you so it is a positive amount now the rate that it wants the periodic rate has to be equal to R divided by N now you could have done that manually and just put in 0.05 that's fine number of periods is N times Y gives us there are going to be 48 payments that we're making so here we're going to set equals and for the loan formula we don't use the FV we don't have a savings account that's getting this we want to find out what our payment is so here we're going to find our payment formula is what it uses in and you'll see there it is PMT or you could go to financial and scroll all the way down to the payment formula is right there and that's good so it's gonna have the same type of thing you're gonna have the rate the number of periods the principal value the final value now in this case we want the loan to be paid off that means it goes down to zero so we hit OK now notice this is in red or it was a negative number that means we have to make a three hundred fifty two dollar and twenty eight sent payment every time in order to make that come out correctly and that's how you pay off your loans